Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00, and more specifically, welcome to the Armory. This is where all weapons from Halo Lore will be featured and analysed in detail. Before we get onto that, I just wanted to take a quick moment to update you all on perks and benefits of being a Patreon or a channel member, and to remind you of the Discord server and that there are special perks for both in Discord. On top of that, if you haven't seen my recent posts, the benefits for the tiers on Patreon are now in full production, including the primary clay casting of the battle damaged Spartan armor plates, the Flood Spore Containment Unit Keyring, and the Mjolnir Power Supply Control Unit Power Bank. Plus, expect loads of new goodies, including t-shirt, mugs, posters, stickers, and other cool merch. They've all come online. Tiers have been upgraded automatically, and those with the relevant tiers have already pre-qualified for the next merch. Again, it's a little thank you to you guys. And if you're not on Patreon, don't worry, we now have channel membership available via the join button, so load to perks on there too. And don't forget, you can always pick up some of my swag from the Teespring store just below. Just me trying to show some love to the people who have honoured me with their views, comments, subscriptions and support. Much love everyone. With all that out of the way, let's get back to the video. And in this episode, we look at the Gravity Hammer. Let's begin. The Type 2 Energy Weapon slash Hammer, or the T2EW slash H, more commonly known as the Gravity Hammer, is a powerful, close quarters, two-handed melee weapon used by the Dural Hane. The Gravity Hammers evolved from traditional war hammers wielded by Dural Hane war chieftains, which were a major focus of the Dural Hane's barbaric culture, as it serves as the ultimate symbol of clan leadership in addition to being a powerful weapon. The ceremonial hammer of a pack or a clan is only passed to another Jilhane if he can best his chieftain in ceremonial combat. The mantle of leadership passes along with the weapon. The wielder of the weapon was expected to treat their gravity hammer with great care. When the Jilhane were incorporated into the Covenant, advanced Covenant technologies were adapted by the Jilhane and applied to their warhammers. After Tartarus's rise to power, many warhammers of chieftains were commissioned into the contemporary gravity hammer, with components of ancestral hammers incorporated where possible. The gravity hammer measures 203.7cm or 80.2 inches in length. It measures 33cm or 13 inches in width and has a height of 61.7 centimeters or 24.3 inches and weighs 38.7 kilograms or 85 pounds. Though gravity hammers used by Jirohane serving in the Covenant military tend to follow a standard design, not all are functionally or aesthetically identical. Gravity hammers are often tailored to suit the desires of specific clans, families or packs. The first gravity hammer and the template for the standardized weapons of this type was the Fist of Rucked, an ancestral warhammer of Machabus's clan, which was upgraded with Covenant gravity technology after Tartarus was appointed the chieftain of the Jirohane in the Covenant. Though individual gravity hammers are crafted differently, the design of the standard Type 2 gravity hammer is rather simple, being composed of a long haft and a heavy head with a tungsten alloy blade on the reverse end. Within the head is a short-range shock field generating gravity drive that uses gravity impellers that are often repurposed from other technologies to emit a kinetic pulse around 4.5 meters outward. This device was added into the weapon shortly after the Jirohane's incorporation into the Covenant in 2492. This device can displace gravity in targeted locations and manipulate localized energy fields, though the Jirohane's brutal nature means that they often prefer to use the weapon in melee combat. This allows the ability to pull a target towards the wielder or push it away, as well as even create a vortex which pulls things in and then detonates the vortex to push things out. The exact mechanism by which it functions is currently under investigation by the UNSC. The gravity hammer does come in a few variants, the variants include the Corpse Maker, which is made of the finest materials its creator could coerce or steal from Raiders' layers on Warriel and Tesh. Improved Gravity Hammer with faster swing time and additional energy capacity are the features of the Corpse Maker. Grinder. The sound of overloading shields, cracking bones and shattering armor is music to Jirohane ears. 
The grinder is an improved gravity hammer with uncalibrated impellers that generate an unstable gravimetric vortex EMP at the point of impact. Tartarus's gavel. During his ascent to power within the Covenant, Tartarus used his relationship with the Prophets to reward loyal lieutenants with advanced weaponry secretly forged within the sacred promissory. One such hammer was the Tartarus's gavel. It is a mythic gravity hammer that unleashes a linear series of kinetic explosions with each swing that also EMPs vehicles. Equipping Tartarus's gavel also boosts the movement speed, shield strength and jump height of the wielder. Dural Hane Warlord's gravity hammers, these uniquely fashioned gravity hammers are equipped with a gravity beam to drag targets closer. Vorodus's gravity hammer, this gravity hammer is only wielded by Vorodus who added infusion gel to leave puddles or pools of infusion on impact. The gravity hammer is a very powerful weapon used in close quarters combat with a bit of skill they can even be effectively used against vehicles usually offering an instant kill. The hammer has a splash damage effect, and a well-placed hit could kill multiple foes in one swing. In some aspects it is more powerful than the energy sword. A kill against a covenant enemy or an opponent in multiplayer uses 10% of the energy sword's battery whereas the gravity hammer only uses 8.33. When timed perfectly, the gravity hammer can even be used to deflect certain objects such as rockets and even grenades. In campaign, only 5% of the hammer's battery is actually used per swing, offering a massive advantage. The gravity hammer is still rather huge and visible, so when wielding it as a primary or secondary weapon, you may risk making yourself a target for enemy snipers. The glowing blue vents at the top of the weapon are still visible when the player has active camouflage, again perhaps giving away the location of the wielder. If you swing the hammer too slowly or out of range, it will push your opponent back, making it harder for you to finish them off, and easier for them to counter your attack. An enemy wielding a shotgun can easily take down a player with a gravity hammer before he has the time to swing. The large area of effect of the weapon means that using in tight quarters with friendly units nearby is highly unadvisable. While the gravity hammer takes only 5% of energy for a swing, compared to the sword's 10% depletion, the sword only expends energy when it hits. The hammer wastes with every swing, regardless of if it hits or not. If the gravity hammer is being used as a secondary weapon, the user cannot swing the second that it is wielded. The user must have rested the right arm on the handle before a swing can be attempted, because it's simply too large. This is similar to the energy sword having to ignite before a lunge is possible, and might have been added to gameplay for balancing issues. The gravity hammer almost perfectly defines and complements the creatures who wield it. It is tough, rugged, powerful, dangerous, and utterly lethal, much like the brutes themselves. One hit from a hammer, and you end up as a puddle of blood and bones. Thanks for watching. Stick your comments down below. I look forward to what you have to say. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. Neek the Silent Cartographer, Brian, Sebastian, Red Sea, Darian, Falcon X003, Weeb Lord and DW, the holders of the mantle, Black Biscuit, J Rabbit, Austin, Kaiser, Silux, Mist Legends, The Revanche, Andre, Samantha and Jake, my reclaimers, Bastian, Critical, Daniel, David, Deep Cover, Dylan, Guppy, Josh, Kenneth, Mickey, Mulchar, Nightrise, Sierra G059, Spesco, Starlight, Verbal Statue, and Zach, my Metox and all the other patrons that have jumped aboard to support the channel. You guys are awesome, and all of this wouldn't be possible without you. If you like Halo Lord Discuss to Insane of the Detail, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. Be sure to support us on all major social media channels, including Discord, and if you really love the channel, consider heading over to Patreon and supporting the channel over there. It would mean the world to me and would free up more of my time for me to put into this content and other Halo-related goodness. Take it easy, everyone, and find peace in the domain.